Hey everyone, Matt here from Tyke to help you get started with Tyke on Microsoft Azure and Ubuntu. So the first thing that we're going to do is come to the Azure portal, which is the first screen that we come to after login. And from there, what we'll do is we will come over here to Virtual Machines and come up to the top here, click Add Virtual Machine. Then we will select our subscription, which mine is pay as you go. We'll call this Tyke POC. My region is US East. I don't require any infrastructure redundancy, and I'm going to be using Ubuntu Server. Now, the rest of this stuff, based on what your needs are, can probably be just left as default. However, you can switch the size. I'm going to stick with this standard B1MS. And username, I'm going to generate a new key pair to log into the server. And it will automatically create a key pair for that. Then what I want to do is public inbound ports should be set over to allow selected ports. And then what I'm going to do is allow HTTPS and HTTP. And then we're going to click review and create. Now I'll quickly make sure that everything is set up as I expect. And let's go right down to the bottom here and click create. Now it asks me to generate a new key pair. What I'm going to do is download and download private key and create resource. And then I'll do replace since I already have one that does this. Yours may not need to be replaced if you don't already have a file name this. So I'll do replace. And then it will download that key pair. Now you'll see my deployment is in progress. Once this is finished, then what we'll do is go into actually logging into the machine. And for that, I'm just going to click here. And then I'll come back into virtual machines. Now, what I'm going to do is come over here and click Connect. One thing I'm going to do also is under Network, I'm going to create some inbound and outbound port rules just because we may be a little bit locked down with the way this is currently. So I'm going to add inbound port rule, and you'll see source any port ranges all destination any destination port ranges I'm going to allow all and we'll do priority as 100 name we'll call it uh, allow underscore all now you will get some errors sorry some warnings here and this makes sense. If we were going into production, we'd want to make sure that all these ports are locked down. But because we're doing a POC here, we're just going to open them up to get through this as quickly as possible. Now I'll do add. And you'll see that it's creating a security rule up here in the corner. And now you'll see that our allow all is here with the priority of 100, which means that it's going to be assessed first. Okay. That should get us around any connectivity issues that we may have when actually accessing the dashboard and the gateway through a browser. So let's come back here and click connect. And what I'll need to do is I'll have to use this script here to chmod my Azure user .pem, but ours is called type POC .pem. So let's go like this in our terminal, bring up the terminal and navigate to the directory where our private key is. And we can see our tyke POC here. So now let's do a chmod 400 tyke dash POC underscore key dot PEM. And that worked successfully. Now what we'll do is we will run. We'll do tyke-poc underscore key. 
dash pem and you'll see that it puts it into here for us now we set our person up as azure user so you should be able to copy to clipboard come back to this paste this and we will get access to our virtual machine all right, we're in the virtual machine now. So now we can start getting set up with Tyke. So the first thing that we're gonna do is run this command to install Git onto our machine. And I'm going to run that. And now Git is installed. Next, we'll do a sudo apt git update. To update our app get repository then once that's completed we're going to run this which is going to install a few things for us so we've got app transport HTTPS CA certificates curl new PG agent and software properties common and we'll run that we'll do yes then after that the next thing that we'll do is add the docker gpg key. So I'll paste that and you'll see that I'm pointing to Linux slash Ubuntu. And we run that, everything is okay. Now our next step is to add the stable repository for docker. And we run this command here. And once again, we're going to need to run a apt get update. And that will pull down that stable repository. Then what we need to do is actually install Docker. So we're going to install Docker CE, Docker CE CLI, and containered.io. And we'll run this command right here say yes and it will pull down those dependencies all right now our next thing to do is install docker compose so we're going to run this here which is going to point to that docker compose release and pull it down onto our machine and that executed successfully our next step is to chmod that docker compose into an executable and we will run chmod plus x and then point to our docker compose file that we just brought down. After that, what we'll do is we're actually going to create a symlink for that docker compose executable. And we will run this command here, which points to where our current installation of docker compose is and is going to create the symlink on the other URL. Okay, now. Now we can actually start to pull down our Tyke code. So what we'll do is we're gonna use Tyke Pro Docker, and that's going to have a Docker Compose file and that's gonna bring up an entire stack for us here. So git clone, and then we're gonna to point to that Tyke Pro Docker repository and pull that down. And that worked. Now what we'll do is change into that repository by running this CD command. And now we're in Tyke Pro Docker demo. Then what we need to do is use sudo su, and we'll run docker dash compose up dash d, and that's going to bring up this stack for us. And then we can see that we have done times five, which means everything should have been brought up correctly. So now let's actually try and access our dashboard to get started. Easiest way to do that is just to grab from the connect screen here, just to grab your public IP, bring this up, and you'll want to access this through HTTP colon slash slash, and the dashboard actually runs on port 3000. So now let's try and access that. Now, again, if you cannot access this, just quickly come over into, when you're in the virtual machine itself, come over to networking, and we can say okay to that. 
and make sure that you've added an allow all policy or at least opened up ports 8080 and ports 3000. All right, so it says that we have an unlicensed dashboard. And at this point, you're going to want to grab your license key. So I'm going to do that right now and paste it into this text box here. Then say activate key. All right, now we have access into the dashboard. Our key was accepted. I'll call my organization Tyke. Organization slug will be Tyke. Email will be matt at tyke.io. First name, Matt, last name, Tanner, password, and we'll also give it a matching password, and click off the read and agree with terms and conditions, and bootstrap. And now you'll see that we are officially in the dashboard, now that it's been bootstrapped correctly. So the first thing that we're going to do here is actually, and the only thing that we'll do, is actually set up a API just to make sure that everything is working correctly. So in the menu over to the side here, click APIs, add new API, we'll call this test-API, it'll be a RESTful API, it'll, the listen path is going to be slash test API slash Target URL is going to be httpbin.org, which is going to just bring us back a sample response. And we'll do configure API. Now we'll just come down to the bottom here and change the authentication mode to open keyless so that we don't have to provide any authentication to use this. And then we will come back up to the top here and click save. Now you'll see we have test API created and the target, the upstream that it's pointing to is this HTTP bin. Now let's bring up Postman or another tool that you could use. I'm going to use Postman for this and I'm going to grab my IP here and paste it. So what you should have here is HTTP colon slash slash your Azure public IP running on port 8080, which is where the gateway is running, slash test API slash. And it's important to have that final slash in there as well. Now I'm going to click send, and what I should get back is a response from httpbin.org. And there we go. So this validates for us that this request is going through our gateway through an endpoint that we just set up via the dashboard. And at this point, you can start to look at our Tyke documentation and begin to play around with all the great features Tyke has to offer.